I'm Lauren Leahy. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Columbus Academy, working with families in grades um, two through eight. Um, John Warren, our Director of Admissions, typically um, hosts these Zoom at noons, but he's um, out of the office today at a conference. So I'm getting to step in, and I have the lovely pleasure of sitting with our um, special programs team. And so I will let them um, introduce themselves, and then we'll get started. Okay, thank you, yes. Um, Most of you know, I'm Alyssa King, Director of Special Programs, and you know probably Julia Wing. Uh, she's the Special Programs um, Coordinator. We have a new member of our staff, a uh, new team member. This is Jessica Donovan. Uh, when you call in, you might get any one of us, but you might more specifically right now get uh, Jessica Donovan. She's gonna be the new Special Programs Coordinator. Uh, Rachel Kuhn will be uh, still with us. Those of you that love her, she will, be, she will still be with us, uh, but you'll be able to um, enjoy Jessica Donovan now as well. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> um, and there's a few other members of um, the Special Programs um, team that we'll, that we'll talk about. But um, special programs really oversees a number of things here at the school. We have some prospective parents on the Zoom today and some current parents. So for those that are prospective parents, we'll talk a little bit about um, CASE, which is the after school program, um, children's after school experience. Um, we'll talk about ASAs, which are after school activities. And then we'll talk about summer experience a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't we first talk a little bit about CASE, maybe, okay. um, which is, like I said, our after-school program, and maybe I'll let you give a little background as to timing and sure. um, sort of what the day, the afternoon looks like. Sure, for sure. Um, so our CASE program, um, you can register for that. Uh, that is something that um, is still open for registration. Um, our day starts at 3.15. Actually, our staff day starts at 2.30. So we get our staff here um, and we do a little bit of a meeting to prepare for the day. Um, and then at 3.15, your kiddos come to us. And then from 3.15, depending on the different age, uh, the division that you're in, you go through a rotation. So you're going to do your snack first, and then they might go outdoor free play, the computer lab. And then there's um, some activity. Uh, we usually have a themed week. Um, so like this week is service. So they'll be doing all kinds of things regarding service. Um, last week they did cold science. So we did a lot of uh, mm. things regarding cold science and exploding snowmen. You know, anybody, oh time we get to explode something, they, they love that. <laughs> a few years ago, was that last, last year they did a farm, like a down on the farm and they brought farm animals in on the Friday. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun because the kids could come out and hold them and yeah. touch them and yeah. Let's so. bring the farm to you. They'll bring probably the come again in the spring. They're a really popular event. We love having them. They're really good. Yeah. And um, talk a little bit about how families register for CASE and what the options are in terms of registration, maybe a little bit. Sure, so I can jump in on that one. All of our registration um, for any of our programming within our department is done online through a system called Camp Brain. Uh, so depending on which type of program you're registering for, again, whether that be CASE or ASA or SUMMER, um, you'll have one account that you will um, create through Camp Brain and then different links for the various things to register for. So for CASE, uh, if you go to um, our main web page, which is columbusacademy.org slash CASE, all of the information will be there. And then there's just a register now tab that you can click on. Uh, it's very easy to create an account and is a, a very user-friendly system. Um, so all of that can be done online. And then you'll also receive um, confirmation letters and communications. Um, through there as well. In terms of what you can register for, for CASE, we now have just the, what we would kind of call full-time CASE or the five day per week option. So if you're going to consistently need it, that would be the best option to choose. And then the billing is done on a quarterly basis. Uh, if you um, don't need it on a regular basis, or maybe your child is in some after school activities, activities, and then just staying later um, in case after that um, on occasion, we would recommend um, our daily drop-in option. So again, when you register online, you'll see, you know, kind of where you check off for either one of those that you would like. And the daily drop-in option, uh, then you are billed at the end of every month based on um, the days your child or children have attended. And then again, all of that billing gets facilitated through our business office and your fax account. Mm, great. Good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Um, well, the ASAs, so then I think they start today. They the do. next round, <laughs> the winter session. Yeah. Um, so for, for new families, um, ASAs are, would you describe like enrichment 
yeah, activities mm -hmm. after school that rotate. They're a nice, I think, as somebody that uses them for my own children, mm -hmm. add on um, if you want to extend the day till 430, but you don't want to do full full case options. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they've had things like chess club and cupcake decorating and art classes. And so maybe talk a little bit how um, ASAs, when you register for an ASA, and then if they go to case or mm -hmm. after, how that works. Maybe you want to talk about how to register, and then I'll talk about kind of the process that your kiddo goes through once they have registered. Okay, sure. And again, that's a similar basis where, um, you know, all of our registrations are done online, and you can actually go to the same um, uh, web page on our website, which again is columbusacademy.org slash case, and case information as well as after school activities are all on that same page, so it's nice and convenient for you, um, and uh, they our marketing team has it labeled on there really well of where to click to register now um, for this winter season. Unfortunately, our registration is already closed. However, looking forward to spring, our spring ASA session will start um, in April and the registration for that opens on March 1st at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. That's a great mental note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when they're registered, um, the office does a great job of making sure that the, the kiddo's teacher, as well as you get a confirmation, um, so they know when they're going to be going yeah. to a club. Um, they come down, whether they're our explorers, our pre-K, and our kindergartners get walked down uh, to the theater lobby. Everybody else knows come to the theater lobby. We check you in there. The kiddos get a snack, and then the teacher comes to greet them and meet them at 3.30 and takes them to class. And and then about 4, 24, 25, they come back, they go, well, they go to class, they have a great time. And then they come back to us at about 4, 24, 25, we get them lined up again and we head down to the carpool. Any kiddo that's staying for case, mm -hmm. we like to know that so that we don't make them wait in the carpool line. Um, and that way we can just check them directly into case. Otherwise, we take them down to the front entrance of the lower school and we start the carpool process. So you would have Mrs. Mendenhall come out, they'll ask names, uh, we'll radio in and the kiddos will come out to your car. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, I think, streamlined process. One thing I did want to mention that might be helpful for those of you that might be new to the process is that if you have a, maybe multiple children and you have somebody that's going to case but not an ASA that day, um, you can streamline the process. Um, when it, you pull up to, um, you might want to come a little bit early, but when you pull up to the carpool line, call the case line. Um, this is Conic will answer. And you just have all of the other kiddos that you have join the child that's with ASA and go to the ASA checkout. That has made that a lot easier. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to go and sit through two um, waiting processes to get your child. Um, you can just pick all of them up at the ASA line. Mm -hmm. for, for prospective parents, children that leave from case, the pickup line is where our bus loop is. Yes. Um, and the lower school entrance, that main entrance for Carline is that's where the ASA entrance is. So Lisa's is making sure that everybody's kind of going to one spot mm -hmm. um, if you have multiple children, which I think is very we didn't want it to get clogged up. Yeah. You know, when, when folks are coming uh, to pick up for case um, and we have that big flux of kiddos coming out at 430, we didn't want that to overlap. That's why those are separated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, certainly the other big piece is summer experience, which is very popular. And I, I'm holding this, hopefully this most recent brochure um, that current families will get in the mail, correct? And then um, prospective families, you can find it on our website too. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what summer experience is in terms of how many weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk a little about the ever popular registration, how registration works for that, yes. because it's very popular. Yes, um, we have eight weeks this summer. Mm -hmm. um, our week one, and I'm going to say something strange, our week nine, uh, because I just said we had eight weeks, right? Um, we are actually off week five. Um, we oh, have that's right. shut down for week five this season um, so that people can connect, reconnect, um, get a break and breathe um, just in the middle of the summer so that everybody can have a little bit of a woo-saw mm -hmm. moment. Um, week one and week nine this season are still off-site. Um, we do have one class that's going to uh, be offered on site and it's going to be in the woods. Um, so it's it's going to be a very hands on nature centered event for kind of those traditional day campers mm -hmm. where it's just we do all kinds of things all day long with those guys out in the woods. Um, and then weeks two, three and four and then six, seven and eight are on site. Um, yeah. And so. Lots of lots of choices. Lots of options. Lots and lots yeah. of choices. Everything from art choices, athletic choices, 
STEM choices. Yes, Lots woodworking, archery. We try, we really do try to focus on making sure that there's something for everybody each week. Um, we want to make sure that every child can find something that they really can connect with. And that might be a lifelong learning kind of thing that, that will follow them mm -hmm. throughout their lives. You know, chess is, you know, uh, something that you can play whenever, mm -hmm. um, you know, archery, you never know when you're <laughs> going to have the opportunity to shoot a bow and arrow. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that they are uh, enriched and well-rounded when they yeah. leave our program. I think it's a good opportunity, like Alyssa said, to do programs that they might not do in school. Mm -hmm. My my daughter, who's a rising fourth grader, has done the sewing camp the last couple of years. Um, she loves to sew, and um, the teacher it's still held. I hope it's still held. She <laughs> brings in sewing machines for the kids to use, gets them comfortable with the machines, and they come home with all sorts of projects. Um, and it really sort of for her taps into kind of one of her passions that I maybe not as adept to help her with at home, but um, they love camp and certainly they have lunch here and recess or till time mm -hmm. as well. So um, great, great programs offered, I think. Yeah. We can talk about the schedule too. Yeah, let's talk about the schedule. Yeah. Okay, so we do carpool style drop off and pick up for that as well. Um, so there's a two tiered drop off and a two tiered pickup so that if you're in the first part of the alphabet, it's the first part. If you're in the second half of the alphabet, it's second part. So we're not jamming that lineup um, so that we can try to be as efficient as possible. But the class starts at nine. The first period goes nine to 11.30. At 11.30, um, they then shift to, um, depending on their age, they might go to their free choice, which this year, unfortunately, um, the pool is going to be closed. So mm -hmm. that's not going to be an option. Um, I am going to try to find something pretty awesome to replace it, but no word on what that is yet. Maybe a big slide with water going down. I don't know. Oh, Maybe. I don't know. Something fun. like that. Something fun. Bounce house. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but they get to choose because we think choice is really important. You know, they may have either been told they're taking a particular camp or they might have chosen that camp. But during their day, um, because the morning is about two and a half hours in that specific themed programming and the afternoon, there's two hours in that specific themed program. We do believe choice is really important. So um, outdoor, free play, computer labs, uh, not swim. Uh, there's a quiet time uh, if a kiddo needs just a break mm -hmm. during the day and needs a little bit of a woo saw from all the energy and excitement. Um, there's it's like a craft mm -hmm. reading room mm -hmm. um, and then whatever the special thing. I know I know one special thing. We've got um, Carol Baker, the magician, coming back mm -hmm. to do a couple shows over the summer during Free Choice. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and then the afternoon or and then lunch mm -hmm. and then they have a counselor fun time so they can connect with their counselor. Um, and then the afternoon starts again. So we have 1.30 to 3.30 uh, in program and then 3.30 to 4.15 is our checkout process. Mm -hmm. um, and is there aftercare or early care? Is there there any is, the summer programs? yes. Um, we have aftercare open until six. It does require registration, but it is open. Um, you know, they can drop in or full week if, if need be. Okay, wonderful. wonderful. And unfortunately, we no longer offer the before care. Okay. And um, that has been yeah. discontinued okay. for a couple of years now. Good to know. Good yeah. to know. Great. Thank you for clarifying that. Well, maybe we could talk a little bit about registration and when registration happens and how that tiered sort of registration works. And then, of course, the wait list and how <laughs> certainly in our office, we tell families, you know, still go on the wait list. Absolutely. Because I don't know how everybody is out there, but I don't always make my summer plans now. Um, and they are sort of an evolving process. And so the wait list, we can talk about how that might work too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So for registration, our summer programs are based on um, the rising grade of your child. So it's the grade they'll be going into next school year. And uh, again, you can check all of that out in our um, either the physical brochure or our online brochure. And um, please make sure to check out the at a glance section, which kind of gives you a week by week look at everything um, that we have to offer. Um, um, in the various um, grade division groups. Um, so, and we also have a planning tool page where you can get, you know, first choice, second choice, mm -hmm. third choice. So you can be as prepared as possible for when registration opens. Uh, and in that regard, um, dates you will want to know is February 1st um, from 9 a.m. until midnight is when current Columbus Academy families um, will be able to register. So they're kind of our first tier of priority registration this year. Then February 2nd, again, starting at 9 a.m. through midnight, would be our returning campers if they attended um, Summer Experience 2022. Um, those families, as well as CA alumni, are eligible to register on that date. And then February 3rd at 9 a.m., we open to the general public. 
Um, if you um, are someone that uh, qualifies for priority registration, um, there will not be a link put up on the website, obviously, because that then would be available to everyone. So you will want to be keeping an eye out for an email that will come directly to you that will have um, kind of all of the registration need to know information and including that very important link, a unique link that you will use on your um, appropriate opening day. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the general public, um, you know, once we open on that date, then there will be just a general um, link on our web page um, that you can click on to access registration or your Camp Brain account at any time. And all of this information can be found at columbusacademy.org slash summer. Okay, great. Yeah, and very often, um, you know, if a camp fills up, for instance, I know last year the Hogwarts camp filled up pretty quickly. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I like to encourage parents to still go on the wait list because, um, you know, I think there will be times when, you know, families plan later and they will drop off, you know, the camps that they don't need. And that's when we would go to the wait list. So, and, and that probably happens often, right? It does. Yes. We see a lot of things um, shift and a lot of spaces um, become available because just as you said, our registration opens so early and that would be people are going to have their schedule change by the time mm -hmm. um, summer rolls around. So um, when you are going through the online registration um, process, do just be aware, we do have a high volume of registrants. So um, that, that first opening day is going to be a busy one. <laughs> um, and uh, typically for um, a camp brain is a wonderful online system. We're going into our third year of using it. Um, and again, it's very user friendly and it's wonderful. And they have a feature um, called a, a throttle, which will help handle um, the high volume of registration. So if you're one that, you know, you're logging right on there first thing, mm -hmm. um, you might see that you have to somewhat, you know, wait in line. Mm -hmm. um, basically what um, the system is going to do is it kind of keeps track of, um, if you think of it like a house, so many, so many people can fit in the house at one time. So there is a, you know, security or at the front door, um, they're going to, you know, let through um, the amount of people that the system can handle. So it will kind of hold your place in line. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll let you in as other people are, are clearing out and, and finishing so um, that it secures the um, integrity of um, the system and as well as um, a, a friendly um, user experience for you that it, you're not going to crash or get errors or things like that. Um, but when you first log on, you know, you, there might be a little bit of a, a waiting time, a waiting in line um, before um, you get in to officially register. Um, and then from there, if you do see that something is waitlisted when it reaches its maximum capacity, the wait list will automatically kick in and you would select that just as you would, um, you know, any other option. And um, then for, there's no um, cost to be on the wait list. Um, and if you, uh, there is a $20 um, non-refundable and non-transferable registration fee, but that's only applied if you would make it into a program. Um, so, you know, sign up for wait lists um, if, or if you didn't get your first choice and you want to be on a wait list for that first choice while you pick a spot in another camp, that's all totally fine. And then basically it is just kind of a waiting game. But we, even last year, within the first week of registration open, we had people making changes to their mm -hmm. schedules. Mm -hmm. So um, we do see a lot of movement and a lot of things shift in those. Um, now this year, we will keep the wait list open until May 15th. And then um, once we get to May 15th, um, typically um, openings will not be filled on a regular basis after that. That is after our cancellation deadline. So we tend to not really see as many openings become available um, after that date, unless there are some extenuating circumstance. But I think that will be helpful to families to kind of have mm -hmm. um, you know, that date of, okay, after this point in time, mm -hmm. um, you know, we really so. probably won't be able to extend any more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing I did want to mention, in the last year, we had a couple of folks that um, talked about, you know, the system crashing or uh, we, um, oh, my God, I'm sorry. Um, one thing that you want to make sure that you check is let's say you're at work and you're registering from your workplace. Sometimes mm, yes, yes, they have a firewall or something that we cannot, there's nothing we can do about that. So you may want to test your credentials. You may want yes. to do something to make sure that whatever that is, is not blocking entrance into what we're doing. That's, that's one thing that can get yeah. uh, really, um, that won't be holding your place in line because you won't be able to get in there. Um, watch your car, get on your phone, get out of there. What do yes, you call that? Yes, this network. 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 <laughs> and uh, try again. Um, but we did have a few. I had a few people call me. No, but the system tried. Well, it, they couldn't get in because I think their work firewall was preventing them from getting in. So um, it's important to know that whatever device you're on or whatever network yeah. you're in will allow you to do what you're trying to do with the registration. Yeah. 
Yeah, sometimes even great. trying a different browser, whether it's Safari, Chrome, yes. right, sometimes trying yes. a different browser as well might um, help if you're experiencing trouble. I think on that, Chrome, yeah. different, different, different browsers. browsers. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about lunch for our new families. So lunch is provided, yes, correct. If campers don't pack lunch, do they get snacked? What does that look like? Um, we don't have snack. Typically, because of the way that uh, morning goes, we're hoping that they have a really good hearty breakfast. And then when they get in, um, they're welcome to bring a tree nut, um, a peanut tree nut uh, free snack if they would like to. Um, but basically our lunch is pretty extensive. And so we have not, not exactly what we have here during the school year, but we do have a main bar and that main bar will have, um, you'll, you'll get a menu. Um, it will def definitely have a meat option and a vegetarian option and usually two sides. We have a pasta bar, we have a salad bar and a deli bar. And so, you know, I'm a picky eater, my kid is a picky eater. We can usually find something um, to eat there. Um, we have integrated a few different things, um, soups. We've got a couple weeks where there are soup options, which is nice. Yeah. Some kids just like that chicken noodle soup with some crackers and um, that, that makes them very happy, me too. Um, so lots yeah. and lots of options. We usually have about uh, 25 to 30 minutes for lunch. So usually that might be yeah, more than the school day. So, you know, they can just kind of chill, relax, eat their food and not rush. Yeah. yeah, our dining um, service also makes sure to have gluten-free options as well. Sometimes that's something that you might not see on the main menu or, um, but upon request, mm -hmm. um, they always, you know, try to make sure they've got some, um, some things on hand in the back as well um, to accommodate as many um, dietary accommodations or restrictions as possible. Yeah, that's great, awesome. great. Thank you. And the nurse is always at lunch too, just yes. in case we have anybody yes. that needs services. I think that's important to, to mention too. Yeah, the nurses are here mm -hmm. and um, out, not only at lunch, but here all, all through camp. Um, and you could, I guess we could open it now for questions. Are there any questions about, um, you know, either summer experience or case registering for case ASAs? Uh, somebody asked if, um, registration dates in the brochure had been posted online already and I, I just told them yes and sent them the link but for anyone else who's listening I put the link um in the chat box so uh the brochure is online you can find that there thank you um, and if you are um if you haven't attended summer experience pre last year to be able to automatically um, be mailed the hard copy of the brochure I know some people you want to have that in mm -hmm. hand and it's a lot of information to look through you can email us at summer underscore experience at columbusacademy.org to request a hard copy of our brochure and we'd be happy to get one out in the mail to you. Thank you. Great. Someone would like to, um, if you guys could repeat the registration dates. Sure. So February 1st at 9 a.m. is our priority registration date for current um, Columbus Academy families. And then February 2nd at 9 a.m. is for returning campers from the prior year. So if they attended um, Summer Experience 2022, um, February 2nd is your priority registration date. And then February 3rd we, at 9 a.m., we open to the general public. Thank you. That's not cool. Yeah, that is, that is. <laughs> it's hard to believe February's going to be your And that's on our, our website as well, and yeah. in the brochure, yeah. um, you know, if you want to re refer back to it. But mm -hmm. February 1st, maybe would just be the first one to mm -hmm. <laughs> keep mm -hmm. in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess this is just a note maybe for current families who do um, ASAs about letting Michelle Sailing know um, yes. and, you know, letting the, the lower school administration know if your child is going to be going to an ASA. And she'll typically change that in school pass. Um, for you. I know she did it for mine, so I'm sure she's yeah. done it for others, but it's good to good to give her a heads up. Never bad to give both of us a heads up, yes. just to make sure that we know um, and that everybody gets where they need to go on time. Yeah. Our office does have um, a master list of the students that are registered for after school activities and case, and we do share that information with the lower school office and the lower school teachers. Um, but as you said, again, kind of that second layer um, of uh, just to ensure that everyone mm -hmm. knows who's going where, especially this, you know, the first week of mm -hmm. ASAs, that's mm -hmm. important. We, we love little helpful reminders mm -hmm. um, of what days they're going. And also if there ever is a day that they're not going to be going, whether you might have mm -hmm. another activity scheduled yes. um, or, you know, out sick, anything like that, you know, we appreciate you notifying um, kind of all, of, including everyone um, in your communication, your teacher, classroom teacher, a lower school office and um, special programs, um, just to kind of help keep us all on the same page. Yes. And just get them excited for coming, you know, remind them what class they signed up for. And um, especially for the littles, that helps them, uh, you know, remember that there's something after school they're going to be doing that they need to think about. Yeah. The nice thing about the ASAs 
and with cases because they're with other kids from other classes mm -hmm. or other sections or even other grades in some cases yeah. they form friendships with other kids too and then they'll get to see each other throughout the school day and I always think that's really really special and really nice for the kids so yeah. I think that's also one really good thing about summer experience is that yeah. you know we do have a lot of academy families that come in but you have kiddos coming from Dublin from Worthington from New Albany and it's just really nice to to see you know all that creativity mm -hmm. and culture and everything come together in this melting pot of the of the summer experience yes, absolutely <laughs> absolutely okay. well thank you both um if there are any other questions I guess now would be the time um, otherwise, um, our next Zoom at noon will be um, not next Monday since we're off, but the following Monday. Um, Anika, maybe you want to share the topic. I can't remember off the top of my head where we are on the schedule, but um, I want to say it might be it's either math or um, maybe it's community service. I can't remember, but um, you're welcome to join and register for that on, on our website as well. And um, Thank you. Any any other questions, Anika? Uh, no, not right now. But uh, next week we'll be talking about tuition assistance. Oh, tuition assistance. Uh, yeah. Not next week. We're skipping next week. Monday, Monday. We'll talk about tuition assistance. And for families that are on this call that are um, applying to Columbus Academy. Um, that tuition assistance call will be with John Warnon and another um, one of our members of the tuition assistance committee. Um, we are in the process of applications right now, and everything does need to be in and completed by early February for our March 1st decisions. Okay. Well, thank you both yeah. so much. Yeah. Very exciting. Thank you. We hope to see some of you this summer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>